time dependent. We see yesterday that immediate first. So now I'm going to time dependent first. I'm clicking on new rule. I want to create new rule. And again, student object. New rule. Clicking on next. <coughs> rule name, you can, put, you can give any rule name. That's up to you. Okay, I'm giving time dependent workflow rule. Time dependent workflow rule. Same. Evaluation criteria three. Created. Created and every time it's edited. Edited. Created and every time it's edited. Subsequently meet criteria. See, once I click on second option, what it is showing? You cannot add time dependent workflow actions in this option. So for time dependent workflow actions, we have two, we have only two uh, evolution criteria. What is that? Created and the created and edit time situated subsequently with criteria. Why they have they have, they, have, they, have, they they taken out uh, this created and every time it's edited option for for time dependent workflows? We we'll see. Okay. Why they have why they, they did take it out, right? Why they taken out? the second option. So initial I'm going for created, it is my evolution criteria. And what is the rule criteria? Anyway I deactivated the first rule, right? That means that rule won't be executed anymore if you deactivate. Don't delete any workflow rules, just deactivate them. Instead of deleting, so deactivate them. Okay. If you delete you can't get it that right. If you deactivate or if you want to activate it in future, just you can activate it. I am using the same condition. Student ID equals 1, 2, 3. That is my rule criteria. And if you want to write a big formula, go for a formula evaluation rule. You can write complex formula by using all the functions. Criteria are met. Student ID equals to 1, 2, 3. That is my criteria. Clicking on save and next. Evaluation criteria is every time records it, record is created. And the rule criteria is student ID equal to 1, 2, 3. And if you want to put another rule criteria, you can put. That's a simple thing, right? Save on next. So here, you can see immediate workflow actions and time dependent workflow actions. Right. So yesterday we done with immediate workflow actions. Now I'm going for time dependent workflow actions. See, you can add the trigger, add time trigger. That means you have to mention the time. So when this workflow action should be executed, time dependent. If you say after one hour, this action should be executed, that means after one hour, this action should be executed and you will get the email after one hour, not immediately. If you put two hours, after two hours, you will get the email. If you say after 10 days, after 10 days, you will get the email. Add time trigger. So you can select days and hours only. There is no minutes. So when do you want to execute these actions? I want to execute after one hour. One hour after rule trigger date. So I'm giving the time, right? So you can see only date and time fields here. Whatever date and time fields we have in our S object, S object means student object, right? I'm going to create a uh, why work for rule on students? So whatever date and time fields you have in our student objects, in our student objects, only that date and time fields you can see here. Right? So I want to, I want to... Uh, excuse me Mahesh, why there are only three fields here? Like. Uh... In this rule trigger date, why only this created date, date of birth and last modified date? Yeah, because these are the different time fields, right? 
So we have we can give date on top of the date and time fields only. Okay, date date type fields. Okay. Yeah, date and time fields. Okay. Right? Okay, so and all the date type fields will be here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is a rule trigger, right? It is a time trigger. Okay. So what is rule trigger date means? So whenever this rule is executed, whenever this rule, uh, whenever this workflow is executed, so you can give after rule trigger date or maybe it shouldn't create a date. Uh, there won't be much difference. Uh, if you go on created, created and edited, you will see the real difference. If you are going to create only, so whenever you create the record, so the rule will also automatically trigger, right? The workflow rule. So if you are going to create the record, so there is no much difference between trigger date, rule trigger date and created date. So what if we are going to edit the record, so we got some difference between rule trigger date and created date. So we might create it long back, so we are editing now. So when we are editing also, the rule will be triggered. Then you can see the difference between them. I'm going for only rule, rule trigger date and same. So that means after one hour, whatever actions you have mentioned, that actions will be executed after one hour. <coughs> Fine. Okay, let me create one workflow action. I'm going for email alert. So if I go for email alert, so I'll easily track. I'll easily track. Okay. I'm going for email alert. So what is our email alert? Workflow rule time dependent workflow rule. Email alert. Email templates. If you want to create email alert, please select email template. Uh, we had uh, one email template which was created uh, in yesterday's class. That is workflow rule one email. I'm using the same uh, MIT email, right? MIT university email. Product component. And I want to send an email to this uh, user. Or you can give additional five emails. That's up to you. And click save. I'm not giving any additional five emails. See, I have one action. And I got one rule trigger. After one of the rule triggered it, the action will be executed. That's that's fine, that's fine. So student ID equal to one, two, three. And every time the rule is created. Every time the rule is created. I mean every time the record is created. Clicking on done. Please make sure you should activate the workflow rule. So it is not activated. The checkbox is unchecked. And we have activate button. Please click on activate. So I got one uh, message. The default workflow user must be uh, set before activating the workflow rule. So if you are activating the time dependent workflow rule, we have to set a default workflow rule user. Clicking OK. So automatically it is populating. So default workflow user. So normally we are selecting default workflow user as a system administrator. So who is our system administrator? Select the system administrator here. It is a default workflow user. Default workflow user. So now it is activated. Or if you want to set up before default workflow user, just go to settings. I'm on workflows and approvals, right? Go to settings. You can see default workflow users. Once you click OK, so it will automatically navigate to the settings to select default workflow user. So if you want to go for uh, time dependent workflow rules, so please select one of the default workflow user. <coughs> uh, probably we are selecting as a start administrator only as a default workflow user. So it is activated now. You will have a deactivate button now. 
So if you want to deactivate, deactivate by clicking this deactivate button. It's currently activated. That's fine. I'm going to students. I'm creating the record. So I'm creating the record. My evolution criteria is true. And what is my rule criteria? Student ID equal 1, 2, 3. That is my rule criteria. It is my student. Something RRR is my student name. Not clicking not save. Done. So my time dependent work for rules done. So we will wait one hour. Okay. I have given like one hour after, right? So then we will wait one hour. So and we will check I'll get the email or not after one hour. Okay, after one hour. So in this one hour what we will do? So we'll go to next concept. So anyway, we will have one hour class still, right? So we don't need to wait for one hour. If you monitor, if you want to monitor, so the work actions are fired or not, okay? Please go to setup. Please go to setup. Don't go to administrator. Don't go to build or any create or customize. Go to monitor. If you want to monitor. This time dependent workflows. Please go to monitor. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Please go to monitor. And under monitor, you can see time based workflows. Right? So cl click on time based workflows. <coughs> click on search. So you can monitor all time-based workflow rules from, from monitor time-based workflow. See the record is RRRR or something. Yes, my record name is RRRR. Object is student object. Yes, of course it is student object record. Workflow rule name, TDWF rule. Is it right? Yes, my workflow rule is TDWF rule. And schedule date. 6.54 p.m. Created date 5.54 p.m. So I created at 5.54. So the workflow also triggered at 5.54. So I have given one hour after, right? That is my workflow rule. I give it one hour after. So I created at 5.54. So 5.54 means one hour, right? 5 plus 1, 6. At 6.54, so the role will be triggered. At 6.54, I'll get the email. Automatically, I'll get the email. Once this is executed, so it will automatically delete it from the queue. 